Hello, brothers and sisters of the church. Cristo Libera. God bless everyone out there listening. Um, God put it in my heart to give a testimony of my um, pre-deliverance versus my post-deliverance experience. And this is very, very powerful. And I am a little out of my comfort zone sharing this. But my testimony, I think uh, God has really put it in my heart to share with everybody out there. Um, so there's three areas of my life, actually four. Um, I've condensed um, two of them. So I'm going to do first what I felt before I got delivered. Um, so emotionally and mentally, I was sad, depressed, lonely, bewildered, resentful, bitter, isolated, lazy. I didn't have any motivation. I was feeling defeated and guilty. This led to financial decisions that I made on an impulse. I would miss work, um, make up excuses to not go to work. I would procrastinate things. I was feeling irritable with people. I had a general sense of defeat in life. It was terrible. Um, I felt like, what's the point of purpose? You know, um, I'm just floating through it. I'm never gonna make it. I didn't wanna pray, read the Bible, or congregate physically. Um, I was having anxious sleep. I was having waves of anxiousness. I would wake up and I would feel like my heart getting squeezed in my chest with just anxiety of everything that I needed to take on on the day. Uh, I was having heart palpitations, migraines, mindless eating. I was laying in bed zoning out a lot. I was drinking and smoking to calm my nerves, um, to escape. I was calling up old boyfriends, you know, um, having impure sexual desires. I was having nightmares. I was teeth grinding and clenching my jaw at night uh, just from stress and just uh, this terrible, terrible, um, you know, feeling of, of, of just no peace at all. Um, and spiritually, I was feeling guilty over being spiritually lazy of not reading my Bible, not praying, not going to church. I mean, I am a Christian. I have been a Christian born and raised. Um, I was tormented. I would hear voices in my head saying, go read the Bible, go to church. Um, but then mentally and physically, I just wasn't able to do it. And then I would feel like the most worthless, pathetic Christian in the world. Um, there was like voices in my head encouraging me to sin. Um, go listen to this song on the radio that's secular, you know, to escape instead of going to God. Um, you know, go to the bar and get drunk and just forget about life for a while. I'll go outside and smoke a cigarette and no one's watching and it's just going to make you feel better and calm you down. Um, it was terrible. And then, uh, go, you know, have these mindless conversations with your coworkers about gossiping and criticizing people. It was just all really bad stuff. And it would always make me feel guilty. I knew better than to do these things. I was taught not to do these things. And yet I had these impulses to do them. And it was a lie. It was all like, oh, you're going to feel better if you, you know, uh, if you, if you sin, you're going to feel better. This is how everybody deals with it. You know, it works. You hear about it all the time. It's glorified. Um, and that was a lie. That was a lie from the enemy. Uh, it was terrible, terrible. I, it literally was like a jail in my head that I couldn't escape. Um, and it, what made it worse was that, you know, I had already started in Cristo Libera. Um, a year ago I had started and I knew um, that deliverance existed and there was people in my life, my mother, you know, ready to do deliverance on me. And I just was too ashamed. Um, I felt like I, there was no way I could walk the Christian life again. I would miss the things of the world too much. You know, I can't hang out with my friends anymore. I can't go to my bars. I can't, you know, listen to the music I love. And it was just like, no, I can't do it. But there was so much torment in my head um, of guilt. And that was the enemy's attack on me. Blind her, yell at her for what she should be doing, and then make her feel terrible afterwards for not doing it on repeat, 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 24-7, 24-7. And that was what was really wearing me down. It was, it was crazy. I felt like I was going crazy. Um, I knew that something had to change. It was just not sustainable the way I was living. I could not imagine living the rest of my life in that hamster wheel of guilt in my head. Um, and I knew something had to change. God was pulling me to get delivered, but I was afraid. I was afraid of what people would think of having to expose my sins, you know, to the church and to, you know, the people doing deliverance. I mean, I was embarrassed. I was really embarrassed. I felt so ashamed, you know, like a really bad human being. Um, and that was the enemy. That was the enemy telling me that 
you know, keep everything quiet, don't say anything, you'll get by, you know, and really it was, it was just, uh, it was just too much. It was too much for a person to endure. So when I finally decided to do the deliverance, um, I was so scared. I was so nervous. I didn't know how to prepare. I, the enemy was dr like really trying to drag me away up until the very last moment, you know, well, just don't answer your phone when they call you, tell them you're sick, you know. But again, I knew that I would be tormented daily if I didn't do something. And God was telling me, he was knocking on the door. He was saying, Kristen, you have to be delivered. That's the only way. Um, so I, I prayed and thank God the church, you know, prays for the lost ones. They would pray for the Christians that have fallen away and has compassion and mercy. Um, it really made the difference between just jumping in and going for it and telling God, you know what, I can't live this way anymore. Let's see what you've got to fix me. Um, so the actual process of deliverance, I was very nervous. Um, I had a very good team and I'm just so grateful for Chris, Chris Oliveira for training just ordinary people, you know, um, who love the Lord and want to make a difference in people's lives that are lost and bound. Um, I was definitely one of them. So now, post deliverance, I want to just give the glory to God. Um, emotionally and mentally, I wake up spirit filled. Um, I no longer feel like the slacking Christian who is never going to please God. I feel like God took me from that deliverance. You know, I, he's like, I'll meet you there. He picked me up and carried me and he's still carrying me now. I don't have to worry about those high expectations of the Christian lifestyle. God is leading me every step of the way. Um, I am not worried about my finances anymore. God gives me my daily bread. He's put peace in my heart. I'm not stressed out about that. I'm not trying to control everything and then punishing myself when I fall short. I don't feel like garbage anymore. I actually feel like I have worth and value in God's eyes. Um, and I have no more voices in my head telling me that I can't succeed in life, that I can't turn things around, that I'm a failure. That has all gone away. It's all been silenced. So as a result now, I sleep peacefully at night. I have had the best sleep I have ever had after my deliverance. I'm telling you, no nightmares, no bad dreams. It was just a deep, restorative sleep. And let me tell you something, that in itself was worth worth the deliverance. Um, I'm also not having any heart palpitations anymore or migraines. That was a huge thing in my life. Um, I'm working out. I don't have any desires to drink or smoke. It's just everything that God has opened my eyes to. I don't, it's not worth it. It's not worth continuing the way I was living. And you know, the enemy had blinded me, making me think that I was gonna miss those things. I don't miss them one bit. I don't miss them. In fact, now I am hungry for God. I want to read my Bible and I'm able to. I'm able to pick up my Bible and read a couple of verses here, read a couple of chapters there. Um, music, you know, I thought I would miss it. Um, I'm a, a musician, I love music. Um, I don't miss it at all. I, God has just filled every single void that I thought I would have from being delivered. All those things that the world was offering me, God has wiped those all away. It's almost like having amnesia. I don't even think about them anymore. He has me so focused on him and sharing what he's done for me to free me that I don't even think about you know all that worldly stuff. Um, the discernment of the spirit has returned so i can look back now and see how the enemy had me blinded um the desire to minister to others has just touched my heart i want to cry with compassion when i see people in the streets suffering the same way i was suffering um and i'm excited i'm really excited um to continue seeing what god has in store for me um this really is a gift this really is amazing in the scripture. You know, I hear about people being liberated, liberated, and it just seemed like something that God doesn't do anymore, that that's something that just doesn't happen. It's just very supernatural. It is real. It is so real and it is so powerful. And I'm so grateful and blessed. Um, thank you, Cristo Libera. Thank you, Pastor Roger. Thank you, um, all the brothers and sisters out there fighting for, for souls and being warriors for Christ. It has changed my life by through God's mercy. And I know that 
he has many more things in store for, for the entire ministry. So thank you for listening, everybody. And if you haven't gotten l delivered, if you're thinking about it, if you're on the fence, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you feel in your heart the desire and need to do it because it will be the best decision of your life. So God bless everyone. Amen.